am so happy to be here with you at Kids Church. Um, that's a nice day today. So I'm sitting outside and you can hear the birds talking. And I am gonna start us off with a little game. This game is called True or False. So if you think it is true, the answer to the question is true, I'm gonna have you touch your nose. And if it's false, I'm gonna have you touch your foot. I don't know if I can get my foot up here. Ugh. Touch your foot, okay? I got my socks on. All right, you ready? So true, touch your nose. False, touch your foot, okay? All right, first question. My first question is, there are 66 books in the Bible. Do you think that's true or false? What do you think? Ah, if you touched your nose, you were right. Good job. Okay, my second question. Cats spend an average of 13 to 14 hours a day sleeping. True or false? True. Does your cat, do you have a cat? Does your cat sleep all the time? My goodness, I was surprised by that. Okay, question number three. The earth could fit more than one million times into the sun. Do you think that is true or false? What do you think? It is true. What? That's That sun is ginormous, huh? Okay. I have another one, number four. There are more bones in your foot than in your hand. True or false? What do you think? False. Ready? The hand has one more bone. It has 27 bones and the foot has 26. Still a lot of bones, right? So that makes up a lot of your bones of your body are in your hands and your feet. That's pretty crazy, huh? Okay, number five. The Great Barrier Reef is visible from space. True or false? True! What? That's amazing. That's incredible. Okay, number six. This one, let's see if you are three, four, or five. I'm gonna give you a chance to answer this question or to answer if this is true or false. Whales eat only birthday cake. True or false? <gasps> false! Oh, if you touched your foot, you were right. Good job. Awesome. Okay, here we go, number seven. Humans have about the same number of hairs on their bodies as chimpanzees. Do you think this is true or false? <gasps> what do you think? True, you got it. All right, true, nice job. Okay, my next one is true or false? Ostriches have longer necks than giraffes. What do you think? True or false? It's false! Touch your foot! Good job! Okay, my last question. Let's see how you do. Unicorns are the fastest land animals. What do you think? True or false? Ah! It's false! Why? Because unicorns don't exist. <gasps> Some of you might not know that. Sorry. I might have spoiled it for somebody. Great job playing true or false today, you guys. So there are lots of things that we can learn about the world, about people, and about God, but how do we know what's true? When it comes to God and his word, this is my Bible, we can know that it's true. We've been given our Bibles. They are the most amazing book ever that tell us what's true. And it's not just a book, right? It's not just a book of where we can learn about the world and learn about ourselves and God, but it's actually for us. God gives it to us to be able to get to know him better. It's almost like a letter, right? We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. So today our story is the story of God's word, not the story, the whole story that's in God's word, but of how God's word came to be. God's word didn't start out as these nice little Bible books we have all bound together. Mine's bound with leather. Um, and I, I like mine because I can highlight 
my favorite verses in here and that remind me as I'm learning them, maybe I'm memorizing them. I like to highlight special ones in a certain color. Um, so it's not the story of how the whole Bible, but of how this came to be. So we know the very first part of the Bible that we know of that was written down was written on stone. Remember Moses stone tablets? Whew, I'm sure glad my whole Bible is not written on stone because that'd be really heavy to carry around with me. And it would take a lot of work. I haven't really figured out. I was going to try to put our memory verse on stone, but it is taking me a really long time. So I think I'm going to skip the stone because, wow, that was a lot. But do you guys remember the story of Moses on the mountain? He went up to the Mount Sinai and God gave him the Ten Commandments. And God even just wrote it right with his finger, which is amazing. That's hard. I don't know how you write with your finger. But it's God, so he can do it, right? So imagine that. What it would have looked like. Wonder, she probably has really good handwriting, huh? Um, so we could say that God himself was the first person to write the words of the Bible, right? And then Moses wrote later about creation, Adam and Eve. He told us the stories of Noah and the flood. And he wrote about Abraham and God's people and how they traveled from Egypt and, and all these other places. So these stories were passed on and told from one generation to the next. Now, they were written probably on, we got papyrus from Egypt, so they were probably written on scrolls, probably fancier than what I made, but they wrote down stories and drew pictures probably, and then um, gave them, they were called the, the scriptures or the book of the law, Moses' five books, the first five, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Um, and after Moses, God's people didn't always obey or listen to God's word. Remember, there were several kings that came along that didn't follow God's rules until there was a very young king. He was only eight. He was the youngest person in the history of the Bible to become king. He was only eight years old, and his name was Josiah. And Josiah was a very tender-hearted boy, and he valued God's word. When he found out what God's word said, they found some scrolls, pulled them out, and read them. And Josiah just cried. He tore, he actually was so upset. He tore his clothes and said, oh my goodness, we haven't listened to any of this. We need to come back to God. We need to repent. Remember that word from last week? Repent. Say we're sorry and come back and start following him. So King Josiah he led the people to come back to God and to really learn God's word so they knew how to live and how to obey God and to love God and love each other. And it says in, in the Second Kings 23, 25, there was no king like Josiah, neither before or after, a king who turned in total repentant obedience to God. Heart, mind, and strength, he followed God's word with everything in him. Um, and he followed it exactly as it was written by Moses. This, the world would never again see such a great king like Josiah, who loved God with all his heart. So then, later we had many other writers of the Old Testament. Over a thousand years, they tell of Moses' successor, Joshua. Remember Joshua and the, and the walls of Jericho come crashing down? So they told that story. They told the, about judges who led God's people, kings prophets God sent to try to remind his people of what God's word said. And then we have the New Testament, which includes the Gospels written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And they tell us all about Jesus' life and teaching. So much of the New Testament, actually, once you get past the Gospels, we start getting into things called letters, letters. Um, I love getting a letter. Do you love getting letters? I think the early church really loved getting letters from people who had either been with Jesus or like Paul saw Jesus in a vision and had his life completely changed. Okay, so people loved getting letters in the early church. It was like life to them. So most of these books in the New Testament towards the end of our Bibles are actually letters written to help God's people understand his word which is super cool. And so they get to be all part of his word. God spoke to people like Paul and Timothy and Titus, Peter. Peter's in here. Remember Peter? 
Um, Peter got to write a couple books. John got to write a few books. Okay, so their words are written in here as part of God's word. And this is what's so cool. We have so many different writers, but there's one voice and God breathed. Remember that Holy Spirit we talked about last week? God the Father breathed through his Holy Spirit. They'd met Jesus, many of them, or heard about his stories, and they were able to understand what he was like. Um, and the Holy Spirit came then and showed us truth. Um, and they were able to write with great understanding from the Holy Spirit about what God wants us to do and how he wants us to live. Um, so through the word, we are put together and we're shaped up, ready to do what God has us do. So we get to have all of these writings gathered together in one book. And the Bible came to, into existence by the hand, breath, and voice of God. My Bible is so special to me. I love to read it and spend time with God. I love to think about and ask him to help me understand more what he's saying about me and about himself. Um, so this is having his truth right here at our fingertips, tips, which is so amazing. I mean, if you think about how the Bible started on a chunk of stone to now we can read it on our devices and um, iPads crazy. Um, I could even send a text message to my friend Daphne, which I did. I'm going to send her Joshua 1.9. Let's see if she can get it on her mom's phone. Daphne, did you get my uh, verse that I sent you? Let's see. Hey, Daphne, Pastor Sarah texted you today. You want to see what she said? Oh, it's Joshua 1.9. The verse is Joshua 1.9? Great. Do you know that verse? Yeah. Can you show us it? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For your Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. Can you believe it? I believe God's word is true. So the Bible is a book that tells us about itself. So what does it say? How can we understand how important and how powerful God's word is? The Bible uses some awesome pictures to help us understand using a couple different objects. This is what it says. First, it talks about the Bible being a sword. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. God's word is alive for us today. It has the power to cut through our inmost thoughts and feelings. The Bible describes itself as a mirror. In James 1, 23 through 25, it says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law and that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. That reminds me of King Josiah, right? Instead, we can learn from God's word and put it into practice, just like looking in a mirror. We see God's standards set out in his word, and it shows us a reflection of ourselves. And we can look and say, ooh, does my heart look like God's word says it should? Hmm, what can I do differently? What do I need to say? Oh, I'm so sorry, Lord Jesus, for And then come back and do it his way. In Matthew chapter 4, we can read that just after Jesus was baptized, do you guys remember that story? He was tempted. Remember the, the enemy led him out to the wilderness and tempted him. Um, for 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus fasted and was super hungry. And then the devil came along and said, if you really are the son of God, why don't you call or make these stones into bread? Why don't you turn them into loaves of bread to eat? Because show us your power. He was tempting Jesus to do things his way instead of God's way. But Jesus answered using God's word saying, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but from every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. So Jesus had read the scriptures and here he was quoting from a scripture that he had read. He knew very well there is food that's more important than bread, right? We can't live on just physical food. We need spiritual food too to survive. The word of God is food for our spirit and sustenance for our soul. The word of God sustains us and gives us everything we need to grow. 
God's word is also described as light. In Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Our lives can sometimes seem a bit like walking in the dark, right? We don't always know what, what's going to happen ahead or what path to take. Like right now during this um, time of sickness and we have to stay home, we don't know what it's gonna, when it's going to end or what it's going to look like in one month from now. But we do know we can trust God because he's super good. God's word is going to help us know how to live in this time. So we've been doing a lot of um, Bible studies and devotionals and just reminding ourselves that we can trust God. He's with us, he hasn't left us, and he can help us get through this hard time. So God's word sheds light and like brightens up the dark places. Maybe there are dark places in what we don't know about the future, what the sickness might do, or maybe there's dark places that we're having doubts or fears or maybe there's some dark places of even bad choices but God's word can light up those places and let us see what God's wanting us to do and how to shift and how to change and how to follow him better um, so that's such a beautiful example of what God's word is like a light Jesus tells a story about a seed which we can read in Luke chapter 8 he tells us of a farmer who goes out to sow some seed some of the seed falls into the path where then it gets trampled on and birds come and eat it up. Has that ever happened to you? It has happened in my garden. Some seeds though fell onto rocky soil um, where when the seeds grew, they died because they couldn't get enough moisture or food from the soil. Some more of the seed fell where there were thorns and some weeds growing and here they choked the plant when they grew and stole all the sunlight in the food. But some of the seed actually fell in good soil. The seed that fell into the good soil grew and grew and grew until it produced a crop a hundred times more than what was sown. So Jesus said, the seed is like God's word, right? The seed on good soil in our hearts stands for those with noble and good hearts who hear the word, retain it, we remember it, and persevere producing a good crop. We let God's word actually come to life and grow in our hearts and we do what it says. When the seed falls on good soil, it doesn't get taken away. Its roots go down super deep, right? And they, the plant is super strong. It's not choked out by worries or troubles because we trust in God, right? When the seed falls in good soil, it grows and grows and produces life for others. So God's word makes a difference to our everyday life. The Bible is like a sword, living and active and sharp. It's like a mirror reflecting truth that brings freedom. The Bible is like bread, nourishing us and helping us grow strong. The Bible is like light, shining a path for our feet to tread. And the Bible is like a seed sown in good soil so it can produce life. I believe God's word is true. Do you guys have a favorite book or a favorite author? Maybe whenever that person writes another book, you just can't wait to read it, right? Um, my friend Levi has a book to share, one of his favorite, and on the front of the cover, it says the title of the book, and then it says written by that person's name, and Levi's book is Shel Silverstein, and he's written a lot of great books. That We, we have a couple of them at our house, too. Um, the Bible has over... 40 different authors. That's a lot of writers, okay? But that it's God's word, right? The Bible is called the word of God because it's his words given to people, right? He wrote it. He used faithful people who wrote it down. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 said, all scripture is God breathed. That's a cool picture of God breathing out his word on those writers, right? With his words, God spoke the universe into being. God's word is more powerful than popular books on the bestseller list. And it's not a made-up story written to entertain us. God's word is true. His words can change each one of our lives and it can change the world. God's word is true. It is our foundation for what we believe. What God says in his word about you is true. Did you know that? God's promises for you in his word are true. God, God's forgiveness through, for us through Jesus is true. Psalm 33 verse 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. 
God's word is truth that gives us a strong foundation for us to build our lives on, just like we talked about last week when we were talking about building our lives on a strong foundation like the wise builder instead of the foolish builder. Think about one of the most famous verses in the Bible. You guys all know it. Say it with me. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the truth. God loves you. Through Jesus, we can have eternal life. And if anyone tries to tell you differently, you know that what they're saying isn't true. I believe God's word is true. The Bible was written for you. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, Every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. Some people describe the Bible as a love letter written to God, written by God to you to show you how much he loves you. If someone wrote me a love letter, I would want to read it all the time, right? The Bible gives us wisdom for everyday life and it applies to every part of our life. Just like we need to eat food every day to be nourished and sustained, we need to eat God's word every day. Remember that bread of life? Jesus knew the power of God's word, didn't he? He said, man cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Bread is something people eat every day, food, right? You don't eat a meal just once at the start of your life and then you're good to go, right? You have to eat every day. You know it's time to eat when you get hungry, right? So you stop what you're doing and you have a meal or a snack. We can get hungry for God's word too. We need to eat and fill up on it more than once. Every day we can be nourished and we can grow from the truth of God's word. So today, this week, your two minute challenge is continuing, okay? If you haven't been, if you've forgotten, that's okay. If you've been doing this many minutes, let's add two minutes and spend time with Jesus. Read his word, show me pictures. If you're drawing, God is showing you something in what you're reading, draw a picture and send it to me. I'd love to share it with you all if you're up for that. And then don't forget, on Wednesday, we're starting our kids' home groups. So please join us. Um, we're gonna be meeting on Wednesday nights and I will be posting more information for your mom and dad. So jump on board and we're gonna be sharing some pictures and things that we're learning from God's word. You guys, get hungry for God's word. Go out and eat a ton, right? Love you, have a good week, bye.